You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hello and welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. So last episode I talked about suicide, and I ended that on somewhat of a good note, but as I said in the beginning of that one, it's a challenging topic, and I feel that even with the positive ending I put on it, it still had an overwhelmingly sort of downer kind of a vibe. And to sort of counteract that, I feel like I owe you guys, so this video is going to be about love. And that is oh, such a loaded word in our society. When you talk about love, you either sound like a very nice person, or a very naive person, or a weak person, or a strong person. It, so many people could see that in so many different ways. But see, I was pondering the idea just now, what is love? What is the act of the experience of love? So I'm going to get a little bit ethereal with you here. Uh, sort of skipping ahead in the podcast for for a little blip here. And I will describe love as the act of opening yourself willingly and allowing your inner self, your your core, most raw, most personal self to contact that same self of someone else. If you can imagine a soul or a mind or a person as a very, very delicate nugget, a delicate seed, a core, at the center of layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of walls and defenses, such as the ego, such as fears, such as insecurities, such as masks we wear, so many layers over what you really are inside. And I think love, then, is a very controlled opening of all these walls from the outermost towards the innermost, which eventually digs its way through right to the core. And then there's a contact, there's a, a, a melding of two people because they open their cores to each other, basically. That is one way that I can think of to describe love. And of course, in at least our society, it's something that's shared very carefully. It's something that's very carefully guarded against. And most people are dragged into this experience, even kicking and screaming along the way. But I can't help but wonder, what happens if you drop your walls to everyone? What happens if you just remove your masks and your walls and your defenses and instead of going through the effort of reserving this opening for just a few specific people and guarding it from all others what would happen if someone just sort of let it go and just let themselves open up to anyone And I'd love to leave the question at that and just make it an interesting, hmm. But already my own mind is spinning ideas here. So let's go into a few of them live on the spot. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is other people around them would probably instantly start attacking them. It just seems to be this strange instinct of people that when you open yourself up to them without having done it gradually, they react by snapping at you and, and almost hurting the exposed flesh that you showed them because it's almost uh, almost a sin to do this, to reveal yourself this way. So they have this uh, reaction to, to try and take you down. Or alternatively, it can be that they feel that they should be doing this too. When you open yourself up to someone, there's a sort of unspoken social contract that they should match that level of openness. And if you suddenly confront someone with, bam, full openness, they may not be ready to open up to you in that way and react defensively. Uh, that could be another very possible reason for that kind of reaction. 
and that's kind of tragic, but that is one thing I could definitely see happening if someone did that. Or who knows, another thing that might happen is you might move everyone around you. You might actually be a very beloved person as a result. You might become a very, very powerful person in a community. You might um, just be very impactful to everyone around you all of a sudden because you are basically loving them openly and they might open their small channel towards you in return and then they would love you and you would become this weird sort of sun of love with orbiting people around you sort of drawn into this pull facing you and I don't know, what is, what is that? <laughs> Has anyone ever done that, I wonder? When you hear about gurus in the far-off Eastern cultures, when you hear about messiahs and enlightened beings, is that, is that what happened? Was it basically just dropping their walls? And what is the experience like for this person who has done this? How do they see things? Do they reach some higher level of awareness of everything, or are they just a lot happier? And who knows, maybe you would die. Maybe you would just dissolve. Maybe those walls are the only thing keeping us solid as individual people. Maybe that's the only thing holding a person together, is defenses and walls and repelling of everyone else. Maybe that's why it feels so dangerous to open ourselves up that deeply. And in a strange way, that kind of makes it all the more beautiful and special and just unique so many questions and unfortunately in this case I don't have any answers because I will admit as a person throughout my life I have probably been overly guarded this has been one of my struggles or one of my um, let's say obstacles in life is a tendency to overprotect and build very thick walls and so the thought of dropping all of them, wow, I could think of no more exhilarating and probably terrifying and completely outlandish things I could ever imagine myself doing. But it is an interesting thing to ponder. Because I think it probably is within the power of everyone to do this. It just takes that massive amount of courage to try. I wonder. I wonder if it's ever actually happened, and if it isn't the source of a lot of amazing individuals we've heard about throughout history. Well, I guess that's it for this one. <laughs> Just a little blurb about love. So I hope you guys are finding uh, some channels open in your sea of walls. I hope uh, if you're trapped like me, you're working on a way to uh, open up the gates. Till next time.